What's up guys? It's Ryantium here, and today we are back in Skyrim. And that's right you guys, and do snap. It's gonna be an awesome freaking day. So guys, welcome back, and happy Saturday. So first, let me say a warm thank you to everybody who gave me feedback in the last two videos about seeing more and more mods, not just home mods on the weekends. You guys are really, really helping to shape the future of the content that uh, is Skyrim related uh, on the channel for the future. So thank you so much for that. So. Without further ado, let's get into today's home showcase with the Forest Cottage. Now, the Forest Cottage is a lovely little home, and I stress little, and I also should stress lovely because it's quite enchanting, down here in the southeast in Riften. So if we go ahead and take a look at the map, we are indeed right here. The Forest Cottage, there is a symbol on the map for you to fast travel to. We're right next to Snowshod Farm, as well as Golden Glow Estate, Dark Light Tower, uh, that and then Crystal Drift Cave, and then we also have Riften right there. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at what the house actually looks like, look, actually looks like because as for the, the architecture of Riften and the area around it, it kind of sticks out, but I like it a lot. Would you just look at how enchanting this little thing is? It looks like a little alchemist shack out in the middle of the woods. It's just so neat, although we are off of a main road, which I, I suppose takes the takes the ambiance and the mystery away from like going through the forest and finding this little shack, but even still, kind of a neat little spot. So without further ado, let's break it down in typical Riotium fashion, shall we? So the outside, you can really see the uniqueness of this home. What a little treasure to find out here, right down in Riften. Even if you don't use this home, and even if you don't move anything into it, how cool would it be to just kind of be walking along your merry way and, oh, there's a little cottage right there. That's kind of a cool picture with the moon up there. But let's go ahead and check out the backyard, because there are a few things in the back that uh, can be used for function. Obviously, we do indeed have a little apiary back here that does work. Always great to see. And then if we go ahead and turn over here, we've got this lovely little backdoor garden, or backyard garden. Now, I don't know about you, but I've always been a fan of the trees and everything around in Riften, but the floor doesn't necessarily look the best because it's kind of the fall leaves. Kind of everything everything looks dead down here. Um, so I'm sure if you have maybe a lush mod that turns a lot of stuff green, you might have better luck with that. But perhaps it could be. You know what it could also be? Let's go here. Options, filters, let's go to fantasy. Okay, that looks better. There's a little bit more color throughout a bunch of this stuff, but even still, it does look a little bit dead. But as you can see, we got a couple ingredients growing along here, and I'm not sure if they'll respawn. It's worth a shot, but looks like we got some Amora Tapanella. That's kind of cool. Got some Scaly Folita. We got some Fly Amanita, Namira's Rot, Bleeding Ground, White Caps, all sorts of that good stuff. My girlfriend is a big alchemist, and I'm sure she would love to have all this stuff back here. Not to mention there's a Nern root back here, although it didn't have the sound, which I'm very thankful for. Perhaps the mod author took it out. But then over here, we've got this nice little shed, maybe, what do you, what do you call this thing? Like a little, I have no idea, but it looks as if it's a workshop as well. I didn't actually see this. Isn't this pretty nifty? So we do indeed have an anvil. We've got ourselves a grindstone, our workbench, tanning rack, and then a smelting pot, which just looks like the cooking pot, which is, it's nice to have, you know, it's, it's nice to just have it there, even if it's not the giant smelter. And then we've got ourselves a little chicken coop, which is really, really neat. And we have our own chickens. Look at that. We're growing some wheat and we have our grain mill. Great to see. And then there was this gigantic ass mushroom right here, but it's, it looks like it's actually just for show, but I like the touch. Now you'll notice in this mod, there are a ton of custom assets. So unfortunately, those that are on PlayStation 4 probably won't have the luxury of being able to have this mod, uh, but you'll see that as we enter into the home. But without further ado, perhaps we should do just that. And here we are inside of your own forest cottage. Now, I'm a huge fan of when mod authors make the inside of the home the same as the outside of the home. And what I mean by that is they don't pull any tricks. You know, you walk into this really tiny house and you walk in and it's just a castle inside. You don't you don't want that. At least I don't want that. So when I walked in here the first time and I saw that it, it kept the circular flow and it had this big circular staircase in the middle, I was hooked. I loved it so much. But let's break down the inside, shall we? Because there are a few secrets in here. That's not supposed to be there, but now I know that there's something over there that we can interact with, which is kind of cool. Now, first things first, as we walk in, we've got ourselves this big door. Obviously, I'm going to point out the door because it reminds me of the Hobbit Hole mod and Hobbiton, the two mods showcases that I've done in the past. Such a cool touch using this door. It just feels like a little Dogen, like a little um, uh, Hobbit Hole. Really, really cool. 
But we do indeed have ourselves an arcane enchanter with a whole bunch of static clutter, which is really cool to see. Kind of just looks like someone just threw up a bunch of crystals all over there. Got a soul gem chest right there and an arcane enchanter. Great to see. One singular armor mannequin, just in case you want to store maybe your enchanting set or perhaps your alchemy set or something like that. I don't know about you, but the way I play Skyrim is if I ever have a need for enchanting or alchemy, I always have a suit of armor enchanted to make things better. Uh, which is really, really good to have, especially with an armor mannequin right next to it, which is really great. Little seamstress area over here, kind of neat. You got a little bust, a little mannequin right there. It's all for show, but it's kind of neat to see some stuff that you can sew and hem and all sorts of that stuff. Really, really cool touch. Don't think I've ever seen a little seamstress area in Skyrim before. But we do indeed have a staff enchanter. Really, really nice use of some uh, some assets and stuff like that within Skyrim to make it look less just like a regular wooden table. I'm digging the windows, and I'm curious, does it change with the time? It does not. Okay, I was big, I was going to say that'd be the icing on the cake, but it does not. But got some cool stuff up on that shelf. And then I thought, oh, that's crafting materials. Okay. Now that's kind of cool. That's good to have a little chest right there. There's a bunch of these little things, too. Uh, they're the moons from the Dawnguard quest when you're in Castle Volkahar's courtyard, and it's got every phase of the moon, which is really cool. So if you want to brush up on your, your lunar knowledge there you go but then as we come over to these dinner tables and to these dinner plates you'll notice it says activate certain things now i'm perplexed i don't know what this means i don't know if you have to have the food in order to place it on the plate or if it's supposed to activate when you click it i imagine it's the first one where you have to have the food in your inventory to click it and then it will show up on that plate and i say that because of what you'll see later on in the mod but it's got a few things that you can put on there which is really really cool something that i've seen in a few mods before with uh special storage like daedric stuff and you know adric artifacts but never with food and that's kind of cool so we have a raw food sack right there we got ourselves a humongous dessert tray where you can have jazz bay crostatas and boiled cream treats and all sorts of good stuff for the kids. Nothing underneath of there. Got some assorted cheese wedges and all sorts of that good stuff. More uh, dessert stuff. Pretty cool to see. And then we have ourselves a cooking cauldron, which is basically the cooking pot, as you can see. You can do pretty much everything in the cooking cauldron that you can do in the cooking pot. We have our regular hearth fire oven. And then we've got alchemy uh, ingredients, I imagine. Regents, is that a word? I, I think it is. I've seen that word before. But we have ourselves alchemy storage right here. And I imagine, yes, the alchemy lab right next to it. But look at how custom this little alchemy lab is. I love the look of it. This honestly reminds me of something that I'd see in Oblivion, which is kind of neat. Kind of a neat little cauldron area right there. And then you can activate the white file. Now, this is why I believe it's for um, the, 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 the plates and stuff over there. You have to have the things in your inventory because this, if you were just to click A and activate the white file, it'd be a little bit overpowered to have access to the white file, especially at the beginning of the game. Um, so I imagine that's why. Um, but we have potions and poison storage right there. We have spell books right here for the bookworms of Skyrim because God knows you love to store your books. And there is indeed something right here, but we're going to check that out here in one second. And then we've also got scroll storage right here. Got a whole bunch of stuff right here. A nice little desk for notes and papers, assorted recipes, miscellaneous and writing supplies. And then right here, a quill. Just like I said, I imagine you need to have a quill in your inventory to put it there. Some assorted little baskets right here, beautifully woven. But let's get to the... The little surprise in this home that really took me off guard and was not, I was not expecting this area. So there's a secret entrance right here for everybody who wants to collect things. And what this is, this is where you're going to be storing a lot, if not all, of your books. But not only that, there's an upgrade font here. I, I don't exactly, I think this is an enchanting, uh, like, font, if I'm not mistaken. But what I mean by uh, storage and stuff like that is, well, we have armor mannequins here. He's supposed to be there. But not only do we have that, we have dragon scale, uh, we have dragon mask storage. We have uh, more dragon mask storage right here. But on every table is a different item that you'll find within Skyrim that you'll have to kind of come over and just kind of run through a bunch of the things and activate to put them there. So you've got Soul Render, you've got Blood Scythe, all sorts of that stuff. So you've got so many different things that you can store in here. And honestly, this kind of puts the, the armory and stuff in Shellblad Castle 
a shame. <laughs> Never thought I'd say that before. But then again, this is a very unique way to store a lot of the things. Now, that's not to be said, uh, that's not to say that uh, Shellblade Castle isn't cool in how you can store things because of the things in the, the vault. But I really, really like this because it takes the College of Winterhold intercell, adds a whole bunch of little rooms, and then makes you have the ability to store all sorts of, like, the, the secret stuff and all sorts of that good stuff. Um, but look at that. Look at that. There's just these neat little displays. This is all for, like, the Dark Brotherhood stuff. The Aretino family, uh, what, where was it? The uh, Aretino family heirloom. So you can really start to see that it's dedicated to different it's de it's dedicated to different guilds and different uh, you know stuff like that within Skyrim. So this is your storage area. I don't believe there's anything else in here besides storage. But what else could there be in here besides uh, custom storage? I mean, it's just a really really cool way, kind of a unique way to do it. Not to mention it it adds that collector's uh, what is it? The collector's draw to this home that wouldn't necessarily be seen as a collector's home. But last but not least, we can go ahead and venture on upstairs this lovely little swirly staircase, and we can find our bedroom. Now, the bed inside of here, it's, it, you know, it's just kind of a nice little area, just kind of a neat little spot to call your own, to rest your head, store some weapons if you need to, grab some Zs on this nice little comfortable mattress, and then store some jewelry and gems, and activate exquisite sapphires and stuff like that. Kind of cool to see. Little storage up here for clothes and armor, as well as a bedroll, I imagine, for perhaps um, a follower, if I had to guess. But I do believe that's everything that this home has to offer, guys. Now, uh, let me ask you this question. Would you use this home, and what would you use it for? Let's have a discussion down there in the comment section, because this is kind of a unique home, one that I'm excited to see, and one that I would be excited to do a Let's Play with if I were to ever do another Let's Play. It would be very cool to have this home as a refuge down here in Riften, especially if I was role-playing as like a, a reclusive wood elf, or like an alchemist gone rogue, or something like that. Kind of cool, but... Let me know. Did you guys like it? Did you hate it? Would you use it? Would you not use it? Let me know down there in the comment section. But guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.